Hey friends, what's up? My name is Joss and welcome back to Squibbles Reads. Recently, I've read two books and started another that have been immensely profound and thought-provoking, and I wanted to make a video with a little more space to review and talk about them individually. A few housekeeping things before we start. If you missed my announcement video, I will be hosting the first ever Genrethon on April 10th to the 17th with Lauren from Lauren and the Books, Kristen from Vienna Waits Books, and Brittany from Under the Radar Books. We are all super excited about it, so if you want to find out what that is all about, I will leave a link to my announcement video down below. The four of us will also be hanging out with Max from Well Done Books, Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, and Olive from A Book Olive on Britney's live show this Sunday on her channel in celebration of her reaching 2,000 subscribers. It's going to be on her channel at 12 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday, March the 20th. Okay, and finally, for a nice little segue into my first book that I'm going to introduce, starting next Thursday, March the 24th, I will be starting a new series on my channel called Thrillers and More Thursday. It's going to be super casual. I'll be introducing or reviewing a mystery, thriller, psychological type book, and I'll also chat about two or three other books which may be not in that genre which I am reading. It's pretty much like a hangout and talk about books with me, but there will always be some type of thrillery book involved. That brings me to the first book that I'm going to introduce, and it is called Viral by Helen Fitzgerald, and it was sent to me by Favor and Favor in the UK. Our protagonist's name is Sue, and her full given name is Sue Jin. As a baby, she was abandoned on the steps of a building in Korea, and was adopted by a couple named Ruth and Bernie, and now she lives in the UK. Ruth and Bernie also have a biological daughter around Sue's age named Leah. Leah is your stereotypical wild party-goer, as opposed to Sue's more obedient, demure personality. Everyone is shocked when they find a video that goes viral of Sue, who appears to be drunk and performing sexual acts in a nightclub when they go on vacation in Mogalu. I'm about 10% into it and I'm really enjoying hearing about Sue's backstory and how her culture and her upbringing within the family dynamics plays into this event. It's been pretty fast-paced so far and I'm very happy to continue on with it. My first review of this video is going to play into the same themes of being a person of color in Western society and also revolves around a crime. It's called Shelter by Jung Yoon and it came out two days ago. We follow a 36-year-old Korean man named Kyung who is married to a Caucasian woman named Jillian and they live in the States. The plot revolves around the brutal attack of Kyung's mother, who is a Korean immigrant and strongly tied to her traditional Korean values. It's super interesting because Jillian's brother and her father are two of the police officers that first arrive on the crime scene. What I loved about this book is that Kyung felt pressure not only to conform to the Western notion of being a father and a husband, but also feels pressure from the traditional dynamics of his family of origin. In Shelter, intersectionality on so many levels is explored. There's age because Kyung's parents are older. There's also race because they are Korean, classism because Kyung's parents are also more well off, and it talks about violence and crime in the face of all of these things. This book is written with a lot of dialogue and description about each character's reaction to specific events, but not a lot of a lavish description of like the scenery and their surroundings. I think this makes it extremely person-centered and allows us to get to know each person intimately because we get to hear from them directly. It plays into that with these issues, each individual has a subjective and completely valid reaction, and hearing their stories and their opinions helps to facilitate understanding and empathy. This book still has me thinking even though I read it a couple weeks ago, and I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. This third book is a strong contender for my top 10 books of 2016, and it is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. It's a book based on a real event that took place in 1828, and I read it with Denise from Denise Marie Books. I will do my best, but I honestly don't think that any of the words that I'll say will do this book justice. So Agnes Magnus' daughter was a woman in Iceland who was convicted of murdering Nathan and Peter. Two others were also implicated, a man named Friedrich and a woman named Siga. Agnes is ordered to be executed and is sent to a farm named Kornsa, awaiting her execution date. People who are accused of a crime are required to seek religious counsel, and Agnes requests a priest named Todi. One thing that I thought was especially profound was that Siga, the other woman implicated in the murder, in comparison to Agnes, she was younger, prettier, more obedient, and more soft-spoken. Because of these things, she somehow got an appeal for her execution, whereas Agnes was denied one, and was treated in less humane conditions in comparison to Siga. The writing is haunting and raw, perfectly descriptive of the Icelandic rural setting, but also extremely incisive and sharp where it's called for. At the beginning of every chapter, there are letters and transcripts that are sent between people who are involved in the case 
essays, and they have been actually directly translated and adapted from these letters in real life. I generally am a really fast reader, but I needed to take breaks every three or four chapters to really sink into and immerse myself in the writing. There were passages that stuck with me for hours and hours, and that is exactly what I look for in a book, so I could not give Burial Rites any less than five stars. So that is it for now. Remember to come and hang out with us at 12 p.m. Pacific on Brittany's channel on Sunday. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything else, please leave me a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!